This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, June the 19th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Romuald, who founded the Camaldolese order and was at the head of the so-called Renaissance of Aeromedical Asceticism, which is a great phrase to use in casual conversation with a brain surgeon or a rocket scientist. St. Romuald was born in A.D. 951 in Ravenna, Italy, to wealthy aristocrats. Now, this was the height of the great medieval monasteries, the most important of which were part of the powerful Benedictine Cluny group. Catholicism tended to exist in enclaves around cathedrals or monasteries at the time, and so bishops and abbots were the real power brokers, and the younger sons of aristocrats were often shunted into these positions. Romuald was definitely moving that direction when his father got caught up in a duel. That led to a bit of an existential crisis for Romuald, who went first to a local monastery for 40 days of penance for his part in the duel. He joined the monastery briefly, but it was too lax, and so Romuald set up shop near Venice as a hermit and studied at the library there. He aided monasteries who wanted his advice and eventually set up his own permanent monastery, which was really just a grouping of hermits around a simple central chapel. Romuald's legacy of aeromedical asceticism is this idea of being a hermit who does penance for himself and for the world. Less than a hundred years later, St. Bernard of Clairvaux would set up the Cistercians, and a whole wave of monastic reforms would wash across Europe as more and more monks and nuns sought the life of perfection in Jesus rather than a comfortable place to live out their days. St. Romuald gets far too little credit for blazing a trail that big names like Bernard of Clairvaux, Dominic, and Teresa of Avila would follow in their own monastic reforms. Today in 1988, Pope John Paul II canonized 117 Vietnamese martyrs, sometimes referred to as St. Andrew Dunlach and his companions. Their feast day is in November, but this was a gigantic big day for Vietnamese Catholics. The church thrives in Vietnam. The estimated number of martyrs in modern Vietnam is between 130,000 and 300,000. That's across a few broad eras, and these aren't the only Vietnamese canonized. In 1900, Pope Leo XIII canonized 64. In 1906, Pius X canonized another eight. Then Pius X again in 1909, and Pius XII in 1951. Today, in 1988, John Paul canonized these 117, and then in 2000, he beatified Andrew Fuyen. All of their stories are worth looking into, but perhaps the takeaway from this is that the Asian peoples are easily overlooked in our world and certainly in our American culture. We're surrounded by a very vocal minorities who insist on attention and entitlement. The Asian culture, though, is less individualistic and less materialistic, and so Catholicism thrives there in a quiet willingness to prioritize others and to love expecting nothing in return. In the U.S., Vietnamese Catholicism really is beautiful, and it shows how enculturation can work. Finally today is the birthday in 1623 of French scientist and logician Blaise Pascal. Pascal was a scientist and a Catholic theologian who was every bit a child prodigy. He wrote complex papers on pressure and the physics of vacuum. At the same time, he wrote philosophical papers on scientific method and abstract math. He was a teenager when he started to develop the principles of the modern adding machine, and he was in regular contact with Pierre de Fermat, whose probability theorems have become essential parts of basically all modern science. In his early 30s, he had a powerful religious experience and began writing incredible works of philosophy and theology, including the indispensable pensées. Amazingly, he did all of this while suffering near constant health problems, which took his life at the age of 39. It's hard to overstate the importance of Blaise Pascal on modern science, philosophy, and religious history. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.